On this episode of AV Week, we take a look at the future of learning in the AV industry, virtual, hybrid, or, or in-person, what combination makes sense. Also taking a look at what leadership and culture means in the world of AV. All that and more, next on AV Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. 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 Is AV Nation. This is AV Nation. This is AV Week, episode 563, recorded Friday, June 3rd, 2022. Learning AV. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Crestron. This is AV Week, your weekly wrap up of audiovisual news and information. My name is Tim Albright. I am your host with us to discuss the news and information. We have gathered this week, first and foremost, Charmaine Torella from QSC. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Tim, for having me. Uh, also with us is Christy Sarah from Sony. Welcome, ma'am. Woo woo. Howdy. And last but not least, so help me God, Luke, if you do a whoop whoop, I will, I don't know what I'll do. Luke Jordan from uh, Electric EA uh, um, in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. I almost said Dallas, on it. So I'll just give you a big howdy. All right. That'll work. Not a whoop whoop. Whoop. <laughs> First story comes to us from our friends over at AV Magazine over in the UK. Claire One announces the quote-unquote termination of CEO uh, Z uh, Hakamoglu. Uh, Z has been the head of uh, Clear One for decades. And the one thing that's interesting um, is that they're replacing at least the current um, interim CEO uh, is somebody uh, by the name of Derek Graham. Derek's been with the company for almost 20 years now. Um, Derek is going to lead uh, the the Clear One brand, uh, the Clear One um, uh, executive team um, through kind of this this next couple of years, or at least the next year or so, uh, while they either hire him full time, uh, or they will you know uh, replace him with with somebody with a uh, uh, kind of a search committee or a search team. The other part of this though, and there's two signs of this. First of all, we can talk about Clear One and, and some of the the you know um, things going on with legal battles, this, that, and the other, but that's not kind of where I wanted to, to, to start with this though. Uh, Charmaine, I'm going to start with you on this. Uh, Z was one of the first female CEOs in the industry. Um, and not for nothing, that that is something, right? And and um, they, ha- they have replaced her with a man, um, a person of color, but still a, a man nonetheless. Um, and you look at, at, at kind of the changes in the industry and in industry leadership. Uh, this story comes around the same time that another industry legend, an industry um, um, stalwart, Brandy Klein, who had, had left and, and stepped away from Crestron about nine months ago. Uh, it was announced this week that he joined the advisory board of a hardware as a service company called Excite. So you've got some moving and changing here when it comes to to folks that have been in in the industry a long time. They know a lot. uh, They've got a lot to offer. And yet we've got some moving here. What do we look, look at when we, we, what do we see rather when we look at the, the uh, changing face of the, uh, the industry, you know, kind of the, the legacy and and the leadership. Well, first and foremost, we've been doing some musical chairs for the last year within this industry. It's insane. I mean, I came from the integration side over to the manufacturing side on the client side, they've been moving around uh, also. And then um, everyone has been doing this for the last year or so. And I think what you're seeing with the leadership in this musical chairs game that we're doing in AV is that they're looking, they're following the market to some degree, right? For hardware as a service for someone like Randy Klein, that was really interesting. But I said, okay, okay, he he's... He's, he's listening. He he's, has his ear to the street. He's, he, that's a kind of a good, interesting move, if ever there was a move to make at this time in the market, because that's where the market is going to. And in terms of culture, I see a lot of companies are looking to place leadership that's not only going to do uh, good business for the organization, It's also going to transform the culture because that seems to be a very big factor for a lot of end users. End users are now syncing with certain uh, vendors uh, to not just because of what they offer, but the kind of culture they offer. Right. They're looking at that as well. And so they want to go, you know, in line, step in step with a partner 
more than someone that's just trying to sell me something or provide me a service. So that's what I think is going on uh, right now in the market. All right. Chrissy, same kind of question. Is When you look at, at the, uh, as, as uh, Charmaine called it, the musical chairs, uh, what does it look like and, and, and where do we think that we're headed? You know, it's really interesting in general. I follow a few different industries, news, just, you know, to see what's kind of going on. And it's musical chairs everywhere. Um, in the broadcast world, uh, there's a lot of uh, CEOs and leaders of different stations even moving around. Um, and realistically, when you're in that, that market anyways, you if you're not moving stations, you're not moving forward. However, these are some big heavy hitters that are moving in different areas. So I think that um, she, Charmaine really nailed it on the head with the culture aspect. Not only is upper management looking for a different culture of employees, but employees are looking for a different culture of upper management. So there's a huge shift, not only in positions, but also in expectation of work environment. So it wouldn't surprise me if we see a lot more of these big changes uh, with some of these big labels um, as time goes on. I know for working at Sony, I've really enjoyed their working environment. I feel that they have a lot going for them and, and paying attention to who's working for them and what they need to do their job. So I'm looking forward to seeing where Sony continues to move on. And I'm, I hope that this move with Clear One offers the opportunity for their culture to also connect with the employees that are working there and bring them to their most efficient level. That's all everyone can hope with big changes like this. So we'll see where it goes. No, that's, that's actually a really, really good point is, is hoping that, that the employees themselves are taken care of as well. Mr. Jordan, as somebody who does lead uh, an integration firm and, and you know, you've got a bunch of folks that you have to create a culture for, you look at these changes and you look at, you know, some of the, the uh, employee challenges that, that folks in the industry have. Uh, what do you see when you, when you look at these, these shifts? One of the most important things is, is people don't work for great companies. They work for teams. And so the, uh, whenever, whenever uh, an employee, someone who's really doing the actual work, uh, moves to a new company, they, they look at the culture, they look at the mission, they look at the compensation, and that's, that has to check their boxes when they're deciding what company do I really want to uh, align myself with. But it's after you've been hired and you meet your supervisor and you meet your coworkers and you you really learn um, is the is the mission statements and all of the the corporate polished communications is that real? Um, that's that's what makes people stay or leave is the people they work with, and uh, when you don't have stability at the top and you have a revolving door, not, you know, you said Z was there for a long time. Uh, Randy was at Crestron for a long time. But when you start to see a revolving door, um, that's usually a sign that the, the vision and the culture are in misalignment. And then that creates turmoil for the employees. And so the goal, is, whenever you're replacing top leadership, is to as quickly get back to a place where you can create a long-term stable leadership so that you can get back to business. Um, it'll be interesting to, to see what happens. But to me, the, the biggest thing is just finding a, a team of people that can work together, really. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Uh, next story actually comes to us from our website. Um, Atlas IED uh, has opened Atlas IED Academy. Real side note, uh, Atlas IED is a, a, a pretty good size sponsor of, of AV Nation. Uh, we like them a lot. Uh, but not for nothing, they opened a, a new online platform. Uh, according to the article, a, it, offers de it offers detailed uh, product information and system design courses, DIY tutorials, uh, content focused on industry trends and best practices, as well as CTI Globalcom uh, certification. And, and CTI or Globalcom, if you're not familiar with that, is Atlas IED's um, mass notification um, system. Chrissy, I want to start with you on this. One of the things that uh, Chrissy is an old, not old, Chrissy has been teaching AV a long time. Um, so uh, this is right up her alley. 
when you look at something like this, you look at in-person, which just for the record, before the pandemic, Atlas held classes uh, throughout the country, and that's kind of where, where they did education. So now they have shifted to not all, all online, but they've certainly done a lot of investment here. You look at, at this self-guided model. You look at other manufacturers' models, which are either self-guided or um, they're virtual, but they're in real time, right? So any real person is, is doing a webinar type thing. Uh, or you do you look at online. Where do you think the industry is going when it comes to AV education, um, whether that's it's, it's you know, virtual, it, it's kind of self-paced, or it's re in, in real space, or is there is there going to be a mix of it? I feel like I could talk forever about this topic as well as the answer to this question. Um, it's multi-layered. Of course, I, you won't get a simple question or answer from me. It's multi-layered because... One thing that I feel as AV professionals, especially AV trainers, that we need to be paying attention to is we're not just teaching people how to use product or teaching people about technology. We're teaching people how to create AV solutions, which is completely different than those first two things. So in my experience and my preference, I will always be a fan of in-person, hands-on gear, plugging things in, teaching. I always recommend that when people who are visual and audible and kinesthetic learners can actually put their fingers in the, in the, in the rack and, and do what they're supposed to do. If they are installers, I'm not going to be happy if the guy that's on the install about to put a Sawzall to the wall learned how to operate a Sawzall via an online class. I'm not going to be happy with that. Um, However, there are technologies that can be this hybrid, if I dare say this word in this context, model where they can learn about something in an, in an online environment. I mean, I remember there was elements in my last years of college that were beginning to come online. And, uh, you know, that was that did save time. It saved time from getting to the class walking there. It saved time for the professor. Uh, the other thing that it did is it opened up a whole nother avenue of, of cons where I had to then utilize extra discipline for myself to get coursework done. I didn't have somebody beating me over the head with a syllabus to get something done. Um, maybe I needed to have it. Let's take the Sawzall example for, for a second. Maybe I would have needed to have gone and got one myself instead of it being there at a lab in a, in a room to work with. So as far as the AV industry goes, I think we have a responsibility to not just teach people how to um, utilize product and, and understand the technology that the product is using, but we also need to pay attention to teaching the ones that are doing the teaching. You know, we can't just say, hey, here's a camera, here's some HDMI cables in a classroom, good luck. Like we have a we have a responsibility to make sure that they're ready to go from day one, and that's n including end user, that's including our clients, and that's even including our fellow AV technicians that we rub shoulders with at a trade show, because we need to bring everybody up to that point. Um, so I am always a fan of academy offerings, whether they're online, in person. Um, as much training as we can get out there available to people to click on or to show up in person, let's do it. This is really exciting. I'm hoping I get to talk with some people at uh, this upcoming trade show that we're headed towards um, about, you know, s some of the work that was involved to get some of these specific topics up and running. I mean, audio system gain structure, maximizing your audio signal chain, fantastic. Um, 70 volt audio system basics, still a thing, still very important. And uh, sound masking, uh, open architecture for DSP, really great opportunities here. So to answer your question in a shorter way, the industry might be leaning more towards these virtual experiences and, you know, maybe even utilizing the actual equipment that we have in the audiovisual industry to do teaching, but we still have to teach our audio tech and video technicians the actual getting, you know, nitty gritty parts of the technology and the, uh, and training them about the AV solutions for sure. I'll stop talking cause I can keep going. <laughs> All right. M Mr. Jordan, as somebody who is uh, responsible for educating a bunch of folks, meaning uh, your techs and, and your folks, um, where do you, where do you see the, the future lying? Is it, you know, Chrissy kind of said it's kind of everything. And then yes, she used the hybrid word, which is fine. Cause that's 
completely uh, accurate in this text in this context. Uh, but where, where do you see the most the most value and the most efficiency in training your staff? First, I want to know where the online Sawzaw school is. That sounds no, like no, you don't. Like no. a blast. It's taught by a guy with three with three fingers. <laughs> well, it's great because there's only three main things you need to know about Sawzaw. <laughs> You know, it's it's interesting when um, when I first started going to trade shows, the um, the primary focus I had was spending every minute I could on the show floor, learning what technology was coming out, how it connected with with other components of a system, um, listening to it, looking at it, touching it, asking questions. It was all very technical and product and solution driven. But as my role in the company moved further away from design and installation, um, I really spent 60% of my time focusing on relationships uh, and, and less and less time focusing on the actual products and solutions themselves. If I'm using your product and something goes wrong, who do I call? Uh, how can I maybe even bypass level one or even level two support and talk directly to someone who has the budget, authority, and knowledge to solve the problem so that my team can get back to doing the work that we were intending to do instead of uh, solving a problem and, uh, and, and getting behind on budget, getting behind on schedule, and so relationships became the, the big driving factor for me at, at trade shows. So when I view education offerings in the same way, the thing you miss with online training is you miss the community and you miss the uh, relationships that really empower you to be effective on the job site. Uh, so uh, I'll brag on Rodrigo Ordinez, a fantastic guy, owner over at K2. Uh, I took a networking for AV class from him when, during one of the three-day uh, courses at Infocom in 2019, which is fantastic. So it was uh, Rodrigo and Gain Foster, and it was more than I ever wanted to know at the time about networking in general and then networking for AV. But then it's I've been able to reach out to them. I've been able to connect with other folks who are in my class and continue my my knowledge and growth after the class was over because I had someone I could connect with. Uh, we got we got beers after the 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 class was over and just got to know each other. And that made the, the experience much better. It made me enjoy the learning process a lot better. And I still had a, a five inch binder chock full of information that I could access at any point in time. And so while I understand you're doing it online, it's self-driven, you can do it in little chunks as you have time, and that's certainly convenient. Um, it's isolated, and in a lot of ways, it's not practical. So uh, I'm a huge fan of education. I read books all the time. I continue to take uh, technical certi certifications and courses to maintain my my CTSI, my uh, ability to talk knowledgeably with clients and to be able to show up and know when something isn't right when my engineers or my installers are doing something just because I'm in sales and ownership doesn't mean that I get a pass. Um, but I, I kind of agree with, with Chrissy that the in-person aspect will always hold more value for me that doesn't invalidate the value that this has, but um, it, it's not, neither one is complete in and of itself. All right, Charmaine, uh, last, last one on this. Uh, where do you see kind of the future of, of AV education? Well, the future of AV in education is gonna be a multi-approach one. And here's why I'm saying that. So QSC, we have a great um, on-demand learning portal, free, accessible to everyone. Um, I think what Atlas IED did is, is wonderful. One of the best things you can do, and here's why. On the integration side, one of the things you had problems with is, okay, 
You know, I want to learn more about this product. I want to learn about this. Where do I go? Oh, I, you got to call someone and bring them in. And, and right now in the age of COVID, the way everyone is working so remotely, that is a hard thing to do. That's number one. The second thing, you have labor shortages. When I was chairing the diversity council, one of the initiatives that we took on was trying to augment the AV labor force. The problem was to learn everything you needed to learn about these products and solutions. There's a lot of digging and calling people that we had to do in order to bring this education to people who were trying to break into this industry. The fact that you can now find this at an academy online portal is a great thing because it eliminates a lot of that time in trying to figure out where to go, its direction, right? And it's also a precursor. So you can't think of it as an end all be all. For example, with the QSC training portal online, accessible again, if you Google it, it's a precursor, there are different levels. And then as you get through the levels, you can go further and deeper by getting someone to come to your organization and train your group and come on site and physically do that with equipment. It should be levels because AV is a trade, right? It's just a trade. There's no formalized path of education for AV. So if you can start with a direction being online as a precursor, that is a great thing for the personal development of the AV individual contributors. For the business development, it's a very great thing because it eliminates customers, you know, customers such as the integrators can be considered customers as well as the end users. If you want an end user to use your products more, make it easy for them to do it. Don't make it hard. Give them all the education they need on your product. Don't charge them for it if you can. You know, some in certain levels, you might have to, right? The deeper and more technical, there's a cost if you're gonna get personnel on site, sure, and you're gonna have to, you know, pay for that time. That's our industry, you pay for time. But if you want someone to really, you know, grab on and latch on to your solutions, your products, and find usefulness and use it and apply it more, yes, start with this education, provide it. That's business development part of it. Your organization, you're gonna get, like QSC, done a wonderful job in making that available. So people have the availability. Okay, yeah, we can use this. We got the training and we're getting help. Okay, great. I want to use this now. I understand it. I feel comfortable because in AV, as Chris, as Chrissy said, to see, feel, and touch something is very important. And if you don't give that person the ability to see it, feel it, touch it in any capacity, they're just going to go, yeah, no, not for me. I didn't get to taste it. Yeah. Not or forget it. Yeah. <laughs> totally forget it. Yeah. But now this this portal, this precursor, as I said, it's a precursor, is very important. On the bigger picture, I'm going to cut it really short because we've all been going in on this. Um, on the bigger picture, as it pertains to the AV industry, that's the other thing, as I mentioned earlier, there's no formal education path. The more everyone starts doing this, the more an organization like an Avix or an NSCA, or, and maybe it's another organization, maybe it's a government agency, can finally organize all this education and create a direction and a path that creates a guide to people to go through these levels and get to the you know, on-site workshops that train even further. We need to find a way to start formalizing the knowledge of AV because we have a labor shortage. Leaders are leaving, people are leaving and taking it with them. So this is another way to start formalizing it in a way, which is what I like. I appreciate that because we need to drive people to this industry. We need to show people this is a viable industry. This is a strong industry. Here's how you get in. We need to increase our labor forces. It's just, that's where I'm looking at it. You know, a different perspective, though, in regards to having a, a free platform, there, there's no shortage of lawyers, but law school and the bar is expensive. Um, so the, the, the free access to education model, um, you know, if, if you're not paying for it, you are the, um, how, how's that saying go? 
you, you're the product. If, 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 if you're not paying for the product, you're the product. Oh yeah. And so I, I spent, I spent uh, a few years, I think this is actually how I met you Charmaine on the, uh, on the Avix uh, uh, committee. That's exactly how you met me. Would review the, um, uh, uh, the classes for the, for the trade show. And the, the biggest thing that always ticked me off is when, and you can smell it a mile away, when it's, it's not so much a, here's how game structure works. It's, it's more of a sales tactic for our products. And so the majority of, and I haven't, I haven't taken Atlas's class and the folks at Atlas are fantastic, have a great relationship with them, but uh, you have to be really careful that manufacturer offered courses are not just a, a way to sell and integrate their products and less about the guiding principles and science behind why this works. You know, the, the Yamaha sound reinforcement handbook is one of the best primers on audio, uh, but it's a $30 book. And you look at SynodCon and everything that Pat and Brenda Brown teach that is not free, but it is good, and it is manufacturer agnostic. It is about how it works regardless of whose stuff you're using, and then absolutely you should get certified in the manufacturer's uh, DSP and amplifier configuration and design software tools if you are going to put that on a design and implement it in a way that is in accordance to ANSI and industry regulations. I agree with you, Luke, but here's what I'd say to that. We've gone through in this world a bunch of universities that would pay to play for education and no one got anything out of it. So yeah, you wanna be careful that the manufacturers are not giving you something just to sell, but you also wanna be careful that your manufacturers aren't selling you training to make a profit. That happens too. You have people who will sell, oh, you gotta pay for this, this, this. And they're using it thinking they're like the college board, right? Good example. That's selling you to have access to the books, to whatever, to make a profit. They're a not-for-profit, not a non-for-profit, but they still make profit from every sale of those exam books. So you got to be careful. It's a double, you know, double swinging door. You got to be I, careful. I hope they make a profit, uh, <laughs> actually, uh, because that 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 allows them to continue developing and creating more resources, more content. Um, if, if it is, if it is a, a loss leader in order to get me in the door and introduce me to other products, we've, we've got a problem. Yeah, but also you gotta be, you know, the college board, some of those exam books, uh, universities aren't recognizing those exams anymore because of issues with the exams, right? So again, it's a double-sided, it's a double swinging door. It's, it's you got to be careful that a if I'm going to charge, I'm not just charging you to make a profit. If I'm charging you, it's within reason because it is, you know, it takes time, work and people to give this education. So, yes, you got to, you know, give in to some of that. You got there's a, a payment to that, but it could go either way. So it's, you know, the, the key is. What organization curates that and oversees to make sure that's what it's going to come down to. Who's going to oversee that to make sure it's based on the principles, like you said? That's the question that needs to be answered. Who who governs that? Way? As we wrap this up, I I, I don't think, and, and I'll, I I point a lot to the IT industry when it comes to education, but there's not one there, right? So there's not one in AV either. I mean, you you a lot of uh, network engineers that I know they'll go after their CCNA, whichever level of that. Well, the the first letter in C, say for Cisco. Right now, CCNA has become an industry standard in the network industry, in the IT industry, but it's still tied to Cisco. It's still tied to a manufacturer, right? So I don't know that they've got it figured out. I certainly don't think that we've got it figured out. We've got a lot of great organizations. SynodCon is certainly one of the most uh, agnostic ones. Um, you know, Avixa has has you know come and gone in in education, and and you know you. you I've got nothing on, on that either way. Um, but if I think that we're getting there, it's just, it, it'll take a second. So, all right. Uh, that is half an hour, uh, y'all. Um, so I know we were supposed to get to security and we didn't. And Chrissy was all ready for it. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Luke Jordan, how do people connect with you? Uh, come to Texas. <laughs> 
beyond going to Texas. You can also uh, find uh, our, our company at EAVI.com, or you can find me on Twitter at Luke Jordan EAVI. All right. Charmaine Torella, thank you, ma'am. Uh, how do people connect with you or QSC? You can connect with me at charmaine.torella at qsc.com. You could also connect with me at the Infocom show at Las Vegas at booth W947. Check me out at the QSC booth. Have a lot of things to show you. And you can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn. Just as my name is spelled, type it in and you will find me. All right. And the W in that, for those of you who haven't been paying attention, Brian Spankin knew uh, West Hall, uh, which is right across the street from the North Hall. If you... Um, if you're familiar with the West and the, and the Central Hall, there is not an Infocom in the Central this year. It is in the West and the North. There is a walkway over the, the street uh, between the North and, and the West. Uh, it's about a 10-minute walk for this old man. Um, so you all could probably get there in five, uh, or you can take the Tesla between the West and the North. we got to uh, get you a scooter. You yeah, one scooter, of those, yeah. like, what do you call those things? Like the, the wheels? The rascals? A, a, a one wheel? One wheel, yeah. So like you, you know, and then you. Yeah, I would probably fall and break myself apart. <laughs> Chrissy, Sarah, how do people connect with you or Sony? We connect through the stars. Um, Sony is pro dot Sony. Uh, our professional product line is there. Also, we have a fantastic professional uh, YouTube channel that you'll f probably find a few videos featuring myself and our other fantastic sales support engineers. So feel free to check that out with different product information. As for me personally, ABTeach101, pretty much anywhere, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. And I will be speaking at our booth at Infocom. That is N1513. So that's the North Hall. I'll just wave to you, Charmaine. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's going to be a fun show. I'm excited. But uh, I'm always interested in talking about uh, AV education and technologies that are up to speed. So, yeah, reach out. I'll be happy to hear from you. All right. Very cool. Um, Charmaine and, 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 uh, and Christy and, and Luke all mentioned the, the trade show that is happening by the time that you uh, download this podcast. It is happening this week in Las Vegas. Uh, come, up, come around, hang out uh, for um, Infocom 2022, the 8th through the 10th of June. AV Nation will be having... Um, videos from the show floor. We've got all sorts of things going on. Uh, I mentioned this before, but but our parent company, CTI, also has a booth uh, over in uh, the West Hall as well, 1461, W1461, so you can go by and see them. Um, for uh, AV Nation, uh, you, we've got a number of, of parties going on. Uh, if you go to buy our website, you'll be able to um, be able to register for all of those. Uh, first one on the docket is our AV Nation Fuse Party. This is our, our AV user group. Uh, that is happening on Tuesday from 5 to 9 at the uh, Ice Bar in Las Vegas. And then, of course, we have the uh, Aviation Tweet Up. Uh, this is a networking event for everybody, anybody and everybody, from 4 to 6 uh, over in the West Hall again, W210 and W211. Uh, so you can check all that out and more at aviation.tv. It's aviation.tv. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. That's all the time we have for AV Week. <laughs>